So I like experimenting with new materials and I try them as often as I can just to see how they laser engrave and see what the potential for some custom project is. And a recent experiment led me to this. Now I'm gonna talk about this in the video, but I'm not gonna talk about how it's all put together. I'm gonna to talk about that engraving underneath, what material I used and how easy it was to create this thing. And more importantly, how cheap it was. So let's get started. Hey, it's Steve and welcome back to the shop. Now I mentioned that I've tried all kinds of crazy materials. Some, some are fairly common like ceramic tile or leather, but a few of them I've tried are much less common. Uh, I live close to the beach, so, so things like seashells or stones are easy to get, uh, as well as corian, which is, a, which is a material used for countertops. But I came across this material called scratch paper. It's not new, it's been around forever, but it's the kind of stuff you give to children. Uh, as you can see from, from the, the packaging here, it's, it's targeted at, at children who are age three plus, so I fit in perfectly. And uh, I decided I would give this a shot to see how it, how it would laser. And in this video, I'll show you some of the things I created. I'll go through some of the settings as well, and uh, I'll show you what you can ultimately build with this. So let's get going. And we'll start with some layout and then some settings. To get started here, we'll do something simple, which is really just an image that is essentially black and white. And what I, what I did was just grab a piece of sheet music from, from a classical piece. And this is the first page of it. Now, it's basically black and white, so anything you see here that's black will be engraved. Now the background of these of these scratch papers is black, so we want to make sure our, our musical notes get engraved and, and become white. I'll use the black and white version of this paper, and that should come out with a, with a nice crispy image. We won't need to, if we look at the settings, uh, so we're not going to invert the image. You will want to do that quite often here, but for this particular one we don't. Now, as far as things like uh, interval or resolution, you want to go just slightly higher than, than say the height of your beam. So the height of the beam I'm using here on the S1 is about 0.1 millimeter. So I'm going to go down to 0.09 and that ensures that we have just a little bit of overlap between lines so that we don't leave any black material in. Uh, it's just an insurance policy to make sure that the image is crisp. Now, as far as settings, uh, on the S1, I can go really fast here, 25,000 millimeters a minute, and uh, the power. Now, the power is an interesting thing. You really need very, very little power with this stuff. Uh, I'm going to set it to 30 here. I found with the, with the paper that has the white background, 30% power on the S1 is, is very good, but be prepared to run a material test. This paper is really cheap, and you, you won't really care if you, if you waste a piece doing material tests. So I found 30%. You can probably go down to f as low as 15% even uh, and still get a reasonable image, but run a material test with your laser and try it uh, just to get the right setting. Now I'm actually going to dither this. So I'm using Jarvis because this paper is essentially binary. It's either black or it's white. There's no gray in between. So we're going to have to dither to get any kind of, of detail. It won't really matter on a musical scale, but uh, but if I engrave an image, which I'll show you in a, in a bit, uh, I'll, I'll have this already set up to use Jarvis. So that's essentially it. I'm just going to send this over to the laser. I'll show it, it engraving. Uh, again, it'll be fairly quick. This page will take, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe to engrave on an S1. And I'll show you the output and then I'll show you some of the other outputs that I did. And uh, you can judge for yourself how awesome this material is. All right, I won't belabor you with the entire job here in real time, but I'll show you a bit at the beginning and a bit at the end, just so you get a feel for how quickly it's going. Uh, in between here, I'm going, I don't know, I think it's 20 times normal speed. So you can see it working. Uh, now this is the white background paper, so keep that in mind because the settings for the color are different and I'll show you that next, but you can see how it turned out here and it's actually pretty fantastic. Now I will caution you to be careful when you touch this material, try to keep your fingers off the black surface because it is designed to scratch off. And if you do that prematurely, then you'll ruin your image. So you'll, you'll have to do it again. The good news is the material is cheap, but you really don't want to have to wait another 15 minutes to make it all happen. Let's take a quick second now to talk about the, the rainbow background. It's kind of a splashy color instead of white when you engrave off the black. 
And I went over to Kittle and I generated an AI image that's supposed to be the London skyline, although there's no London eye there, so I'm not sure. But I'll assume it is. And then I stuck the, the text under it. Now, when I put this into Lightburn, I ran, a, I ran a material test first and I noticed that the power setting requirement for the color background of this scratch paper was about half of what it is for the white background. And you can see here the settings that I have are around 12% rather than, than 25 or 30 like I had for the white background. So keep that in mind. And then I, I ran the normal engrave again and you can see the output here just came out amazing again which uh, is only because I, I ran it with that reduced power. I did a few more images to put this through its tests and I started with this line art image that I created in Kittle. Then I found a Model T Ford assembly diagram. Then just for fun, I did a kind of a 60s retro let's party sign. I will point out that you can do actual photographs as well. So I took this image of the same dog I used for benchmark, stripped the background away in Kittle and then brought it into Lightburn. Now I had previously set the rendering type to Jarvis, so I don't have to worry about that. But I did have to invert the image here because the, the colors will be kind of reversed and you'll know right away when you're doing it wrong, everything will look like an X-ray. So be prepared to, to flip that invert bit when you're doing an engraving, if you're doing a photograph especially. Now there were a couple more tips I wanted to talk about here. And the first one is around cleaning. If you have residue left over on the material, you'll see after the engraving, it might look a little dim. I didn't have this problem, but if you do see some dust remaining on the material after you engrave, you can just take a microfiber cloth and just gently rub it across the material to get rid of that. The microfiber will pick this right up. That works really well. And the other thing is if you want to finish this and protect it, you can actually spray this paper with clear coat. So here I've actually chosen some, some gloss clear coat, but you could use flat as well. So you didn't really notice any difference. And this is how I did the, the patent sign where I put it under acrylic. I glued it to the board first and then I did the engraving and, and, and finished it after with clear coat. So really that simple. I know this was a short video, but hopefully you got some knowledge you can put away in your toolbox and bring out whenever you want to do something really special for someone with this scratch paper and uh, hopefully you saw how easy it is. If you got uh, some value out of this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I try to do this stuff all the time. Uh, also hit the thumbs up if you like this video and, and click the bell as well, just so you get notified of things going on in the channel. I also do a live stream every week with two other YouTubers and it's just a fireside chat with a bunch of Q and A. So if you have some questions that you wanna, you wanna get answers to, uh, come and join that live stream and we'll try and answer as many of them as we can and you can certainly provide some input there as well. And finally, I'll put uh, some affiliate links down below for the two types of paper that I used, as well as those spacers and things that I used to create the patent plaque. And with that, I'll wind down and get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.